Welcome to uh, Attractiveness Part 3. There we go. And we're going to talk about beautiful bodies. And so again, ooh, what happened to her face? Oh my god. Oh, uh, these are stimuli from an experiment. But uh, which uh, body, which figure do you find the most attractive? A, B, C, or D? And so you've decided most people would choose uh, you know, B because B has a 70% waist to hip ratio. That is, the waist to hip ratio is you measure your waist and you divide that by your hips. And uh, when you do that and you rate people or rank people on how attractive their bodies look, researchers have discovered that men uh, prefer women with a 70% waist to hip ratio. Uh, and this is something that we are definitely sure of. Men universally tend to uh, prefer women not as curvy as possible because a very low waist to hip ratio means that you uh, have an extremely curvy body. Uh, but they prefer this 70% uh, body here and men prefer it and also we can uh, you know see this preference at the biological level looking at their brains uh, their, uh, we can uh, actually measure the brain response of their bodies recognizing and showing a preference or their brains showing a preference to the 70 percent uh, weight to hip uh, ratio. Uh, why is that? We think, researchers believe, it's because uh, the 70% waist to hip ratio uh, is related to better physical health of the woman and better reproductive success. And so again, we get back to that issue about when we're talking about reproductive success, automatically that means we're talking about evolutionary biology. So the 70% waist to hip ratio is a marker uh, for men that this woman uh, is likely to be healthy enough to carry your child to term and when she does have uh, and when she does deliver the baby will have fewer complications and so that's uh, you know was the current thinking or was the thinking behind the waist to hip ratio and what we see is that the beautiful bodies of the world uh, do have this 70% waist to hip ratio regardless of the generation or regardless of the amount of uh, weight uh, a woman has. So we have, uh, oh gosh, not who is that? I'm going to stop. I had to stop and look at my notes because I have like a block. I always think that this is Gina Lola Bridget, it's Sophia Loren and Marilyn Monroe uh, Twiggy, Kate Moss, Anna Nicole Smith, uh, J-Lo, and Beyonce. Uh, all of these women who are known for their bodies are also, also have a 70% waist to hip ratio. And it's very, I lump uh, Sophia Loren and Gina Lola Bridget together uh, because they're both Italian actresses from the 60s. However, Gina Lola Bridget would not be in this group because she has an unbelievably thin waist. And I actually looked it up and calculated it. It was a 62% six, waist to hip ratio. All right, so to wrap this up, uh, the beautiful bodies. Uh, men find women with a 70% waist to hip ratio as the most attractive. Uh, they say it's uh, attractive to them. They're turned on by it. Uh, they, uh, their brains respond when they see uh, bodies with that ratio more than any other ratio. Uh, there's a whole lot of past research uh, that suggests that the 70% waist to hip ratio is associate, associated with better health in women, better uh, maternal health, that is better uh, you know, likelihoods in terms of uh, pregnancy outcomes, and also better infant health. However, uh, research in the last two years is starting to cast doubt on that. So the current thinking is this, but 
we need to put a question mark along with the current thinking because new research is starting to show that this may not be exactly uh, the case. We'll just have to wait and see what the research says. And in an experiment so weird, I cannot pass this up. Uh, blind men prefer a low waist to hip ratio also. Uh, Caramans uh, and his colleagues in 2010 uh, wanted to see whether or not uh, this waist to hip ratio and that men prefer the 70% waist to hip ratio was only for visual images. And they thought about what about blind men? And so they had an adjustable mannequin. If you don't know what that is, uh, dressmakers have mannequins that you can dial to different dimensions so you can actually fit clothing on them as you're making them. And so they had one of these adjustable mannequins and this is the weird part. They put it in the back of a van and they drove around, what is it, uh, Sweden or fin Finland, wherever they're from, and they went to places where blind men congregate, like blind men uh, support groups or organizations for blind men. And they would literally say, hey, to help us in our psychology experiment, would you like to come out into our van and feel this doll? <laughs> And what they would do is they would set the doll to different waist to hip ratios, ask the blind men to feel the doll, and ask the blind men if they preferred this type of body. And indeed, uh, the blind men preferred the 70% waist to hip ratio mannequins more than higher or lower mannequins. So this is not just a visual artifact or a visual phenomenon, but this is a, a phenomenon in terms of all senses in terms of uh, the shape of a woman, how she looks and how she feels. Now you may be thinking, well, this is all about women's bodies. What about men's bodies? And uh, not much research had been done on men's bodies until 2013. Uh, Maltz and Jennings did a study in which they looked at men's bodies and how women prefer them and they looked at several uh, variables. They looked at the waist to hip ratio, they looked at the uh, waist to shoulder ratio, they looked at the height, and they looked at penis length. And here we see a slide from one of the stimuli that they used in the experiment. And they're using a statistical technique where you show people, in this case women, uh, three examples uh, that vary in terms of penis length, uh, waist to hip ratio, waist or waist to waist to shoulder ratio, and height. And then you just say choose the most attractive out of these three, and then choose the second most attractive. And so you get that information, and based on the statistical procedure, you can take those forced choices and put them into a uh, scalar uh, set of data. And what they discovered is first off, which surprised a lot of people, well, yeah, it actually did it surprised a lot of researchers, uh, that women preferred larger penises to smaller penises. Uh, how large? Well, we don't know. There was a ceiling effect. A ceiling effect is when you give people a scale to measure something and all the answers, all the responses are at the top of the scale. And what that tells a researcher is I did not make my scale wide enough. And so uh, the scale stopped at 13 centimeters and women generally preferred uh, the 13 centimeter penises to all other types of penises. Uh, so that surprised a lot of researchers because the research so far had not been saying that you know women preferred larger penises they preferred normal size penises. Uh, the research showed that women preferred taller to shorter men and they preferred uh, a larger shoulder to hip ratio. Uh, oh, it was shoulder to hip ratio, not shoulder to waist ratio, ratio I'm sorry. Uh, in that they preferred men with broader shoulders. Uh, so that's uh, the flip side when we're talking about women preferring men's bodies. And now we're done with physical attractiveness and in uh, lecture number four we're going to move on to a special topic 
race and physical attractiveness.